championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2001. I'm Brady Posick alongside Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. Coach, taking on the Citadel team with the new head coach, uh, Ellis Johnson, in his first year from Alabama. Right, and um, I think they're much improved, even though the record might not show it. They've lost uh, a two-point game to Appalachian at the end and East Tennessee on the last play of the game. And playing really hard and, and really playing well on defense. They're flying to the ball. They've got a different scheme that uh, you know, we haven't played against, so it'll be a big challenge for us today. And speaking of that common opponent, Appalachian, we came out of that game a little banged up last week. Uh, what's the status of the team this week? Well, we've got several guys who aren't going to play this week. Uh, Jamar Jones is out. Deion Stokes is out. Uh, J.R. Revere is going to sit today. He won't play. And uh, David Young is going to take a go at it. He didn't get to practice much. And we've got several guys bumped and bruised. But, uh, you know, as we always say, uh, one guy's misery is another man's opportunity. So guys will have to step up and play. So with J.R. out, how does that change uh, our game plan around? It doesn't change our game plan. Does, uh, Melvin Cox has done very well at quarterback when he's been out there. And, uh, you know, Chaz Williams may play as well. So we'll try to do the same things. And what do you expect the Citadel to bring today uh, with a new coach? Well, I think they'll play hard. They have all year. Uh, you know, they run some option on offense. They have two good running backs, a uh, freshman quarterback who's very talented. And, uh, you know, they'll present some challenges for us. They always have. All right, Coach, good luck today. When we come back, highlights of Georgia Southern versus the Citadel on homecoming. But first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. And coach, you guys came out, got the ball first, and uh, Melvin Cox making his first start ever has a nice drive to uh, to start the game off. Well, it was good. I thought Melvin came out and executed very well, and AP got going early and got some good runs. And, uh, you know, we were able to put together a nice drive. We didn't have any penalties to stop us on the drive, and we took, were able to take the ball down there and punch some ends in. And Adrian Peterson, one-yard touchdown run, put you up 7 to nothing. Ten plays overall on the drive, and Adrian touched the ball nine times. He was the workhorse on that drive. Well, he was, and, uh, you know, we wanted to get him involved early, especially with a new quarterback. And uh, But a lot of the plays were option plays, and they weren't taking him, and uh, Melvin was doing a nice job reading. Adrian with 75 yards on that drive, uh, more than he had the entire game against App State. Tells you how good App's defense was. Citadel would uh, take over, and on second and eight, we'd get called for a, a pass interference and a, a really questionable call down well, it's uh, you know, a tough call. I mean, that's about all I guess I need to say about it. And a uh, third and seven, Mike Youngblood comes up with a nice stop short of the first down to, to force them to, to attempt a field goal. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, we once we got once they got the ball down on our end, we again played pretty good red zone defense. Uh, fourth and three, they try a 41-yard field goal. That misses. It's still 7 nothing us with 6.03 left in the first quarter. We get the ball back, but uh, we go three and out, punt to the Citadel. But uh, Corey Middlebrooks on a 3-1, and one, getting the uh, start, makes a nice tackle for a loss. Right, and I think on our next series, we, we had another big running play call back for a illegal chop block. And uh, yeah, we're just killing ourselves offensively. We're not talented enough to, to start first and 20 or, you know, run, we'll have 30, 40-yard runs called back for holding. And that's just... Uh, you know, we're not doing a very good job coaching, and I take responsibility for that. After middle Brooks sack for the loss, uh, forces them to punt. We get the ball back, and Melvin Cox, a nice open field run, 17-yard uh, gain for our first down on the uh, beginning of the second quarter. And Melvin did a nice job. Uh, you know, we were trying to throw the ball to him, and he was getting a lot of pressure when he dropped back to pass, and he was pulling it down and running with it, and he did a nice job making some plays for us. Unfortunately, we couldn't get anything out of that drive. Uh, Citadel takes over, and on... When we force them to punt, uh, Anthony Williams fumbles, and uh, they recover and take it over on the 37. Well, again, just, I mean, it's just disappointing. And I, 
you know, we say the same thing every week. There's a point where uh, you got to quit saying the same thing and put somebody else back there. But defense comes up big once again on third and two. Uh, Michael Ward coming up with a big sack and pushes them in a questionable field goal range again at the 34 and forces them to punt. Right, and uh, there again, uh, you know, especially early on in the first half, we were making some nice plays on third down. Then we take the ball back, and on a third and eight, after a second and 15, Melvin Cox breaks loose. 76 yards all the way down to the three-yard line. A nice run for Melvin there. There again, it was a pass play, and Melvin dropped back and got some pressure and pulled it down, and they kind of blitzed, so they had everybody in man coverage, and, uh, you know, Melvin did a nice job running down the field. And then Melvin finishes up the drive. He punches it in for a one-yard touchdown to make it 14 nothing us. Right, and at that point, it looked like we had the game in pretty good control. 419 still left in the half, though, and... Citadel returns, and Chris Brown and Derek Butler make a nice stop on the kickoff there. Right, and, uh, you know, for the most part, I think, other than the opening kick, we did a pretty good job covering kicks all day. And on first down from the 20, uh, Carlton Oglesby, nice sack for a three-yard loss. Right, and, uh, you know, we, we made some plays. We just weren't consistent as we'd like. We would take over after we forced them to punt on a, a fourth and nine. Scott Shelton, a nice 47-yard punt. He draws it back to the pin. Uh, brings it back to the five-yard line, pins them down there with uh, just over a minute to play in the first half. Right, and I thought we had a chance there and, uh, you know, to, to stop them and make them punt out of the end zone, at least have a chance at a punt block. And we, uh, you know, weren't paying attention and lost seven or eight seconds on a timeout. And uh, although we did, you know, get them stopped with about 40 seconds to go and had a chance to block the punt, and lo and behold, we ran into the kicker. So, uh you know, and enable them to run out the clock in the first half. Also in that defensive series, Freddie Pescada had a nice big hit and gave you a chance to, to try to to get the ball back with some time left. Right. Well, it became clear when they had the ball back there on the five-yard line that they were just going to try to run the clock out. And, uh, you know, all we were trying to do was, all I wanted to do was make them punt the ball. And, you know, they got to snap it and catch it and, and have a chance to max block and see if you can get to it. So we... They run the clock out. We take a, a 14 nothing lead at the half. Uh, Melvin Cox has 100 yards rushing, I think 99 actually to that point. Adrian Peterson, 18 carries for 100 yards. How do you feel about the way the first half went? Well, I thought we were making some mistakes. We had a lot of yardage eaten up by penalties in the first half, too. And, uh, you know, if you take the penalties out, we could have had a good half of football, I think. We'd have had well over 300 yards of offense. We were holding them. And I think we could have had complete control of the game, but you you know you can't take the penalties out when they're being called. Yeah, definitely uh, in control of the first half. And when we come back, we'll check out the second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Citadel after the Ask Coach Johnson question. Back to Georgia Southern football 2001 time now for the auto shine ask coach Johnson question and coach and Ian Fry from Duluth Georgia asks how much pressure is there going through the season as the number one ranked team in the country and of course we started out the season ranked number one right and uh, that's a good question but quite honestly we don't talk a whole lot about the rankings uh, you know I'm sure our guys know that we're ranked number one but there's a lot of pressure at Georgia Southern to win every week anyway and we try to set high standards for our football program and put a lot of pressure on ourselves but uh, you know I'm not overly worried about the rankings I'm you know just worried about us getting better each week and uh, the uh, if you do that then those things will take care of itself the neat thing about our division is that uh, you know you get to play for the national championship on the field and while the rankings may be important in the seeding for the playoffs it really doesn't mean anything until the season's over. And I'm sure you always tell your team you can't play the entire schedule on one Saturday afternoon. You, you can only play one, te one team every Saturday. Right, you play one game at a time. That's correct. All right, and you can be a part of the Ask Coach Johnson segment by emailing us. Get onto our website at abc22tv.com. And if we use your question, you can win a autographed uh, national championship print of last year's national championship run and qualify to win a Adrian Peterson game jersey. I'd like to get my hands on one of those. Yeah, nice. <laughs> When we come back, second half highlights of uh, Georgia Southern versus the Citadel. 
Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fossick and Coach Paul Johnson. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed limited edition print and be in the running to win an autographed Eagles jersey. So register today. Then watch all the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson on ABC 22. frustrating today. We had just too many penalties and we didn't ex execute the offense too well. I mean, when we did get a good drive, we didn't finish it. And other times we just three and out, didn't get a drive at all. We got to do better with that. It was disappointing. I, I, don't, I don't think I could have prepared myself for the feeling. I was uh, walking down on the field and not being in uniform was, it was almost, you know, it was excruciating. It was, you know, just that empty feeling in your stomach. Defensively, we're out there, you know, pretty much all day long. It feels like a uh, you know, we're all in the locker room after the game, beat up, tired, you know, just, just, just worn out. Uh, uh, defense did a good job today, I think, uh, you know, holding them down, not letting them in the end zone. You know, they got a couple field goals, but a uh, pretty good job today on the defensive side. I think Melvin didn't do that bad. I think, you know, he, he didn't really he didn't have any turnovers. Uh, and, you know, you, you put a guy in that position. I mean, who knows how I would have reacted, you know, if Greg would have went down. And, uh, you know, but Melvin... Uh, you know, he's going to get better at it. It was new territory for him. And I guarantee you, put him out there, put him out there again, he'll do, uh, I mean, do even better. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Time for the second half. And, Coach, we dominated the first half, but uh, the Citadel starts the second half, and they, they really used some, uh, some ball possession on us. Yeah, they really did use some ball possession. Uh, you know, they put together a nice drive and uh, a couple of first downs, and... We feel like we finally got them stopped, and on fourth and 11, we let them fake a punt. I think we had two guys miss a tackle about the line of scrimmage, and uh, to their credit, their guy got it, and they proceeded to keep the ball and, and move it down uh, inside a red zone. Yeah, after they faked the punt, uh, their freshman quarterback, Drummond, broke loose for a, a big 37-yard run down to the 10, and that was, a, that was a pretty big play, too. Right, I think on the option, and we got uh, May overran the ball a little bit, and he cut back, and... Uh, you know, it was uh, a, probably their biggest run play of the day, I'm sure. On a third and eight, we have some, some actually some nice pass coverage down there in the end zone. It made uh, Drummond force him out of bounds on that play to force him to kick a field goal. Right, and again, once we got down there and got our backs to the wall, we played pretty good down on the goal line. So the Citadel would come out and kick a 20-yard field goal to cut the lead down to 14-3 to with 9.30 left in the third quarter. We would take over the ball. And uh, on a third and 14, Melvin Cox, a, a nice little screen pass to Adrian in the backfield, a big game, but brought back again with a big penalty. Well, just disappointing. I mean, just the same way we played the first half. And uh, we got sacked on the very first play. And we, you know, found a way to overcome that by converting third and 14. And it's not often you convert those. And there's just no excuse for, for having a penalty on that play. It's a reflection of, of us as coaches and, and, and our players, too. We've just got to be more disciplined than that. After the sack, that would force us to punt. Citadel would take over, and they were very daring going forward on a, another fourth and one. Right, and, uh, you know, I think they were trying to hold the ball. I mean, just like everybody who plays us does, they come in with the intention of running the clock and holding the ball. And to their credit, they did a great job doing that in the second half. And But we end up, we hold them. They, they miss a 20-yard field goal wide right. We actually, uh, did you decline the uh, delay of game time? Yeah, we did because I knew they were trying to, to back it up to get an angle. You know, they wanted this... Uh, you get the ball down there inside the five, and it's a tough angle when it's on the hash. And I think they were doing that intentionally to try to back it up to, to increase the angle. So we dodge a bullet and a big one, still up 11. We get the ball back for the, the second time in the third quarter, and this would pretty much be the, the last time we see the ball here. Uh, Melvin Cox, a nice 11-yard run at the beginning of the fourth quarter for a first down. Right, and they were popping the linebacker almost on every play, and uh, we were having a hard time picking him up, so we decided just to run the thing outside and hinge block, and we, we put together a nice little drive, but they kept cheating the safety up closer and closer and closer, and when they do that, you've got to be able to throw it over his head. And uh, we didn't execute that play very well got behind a little bit then and ended up having to, to go in for a, about a 35 36 yard field goal and missed it 
you know, we put together a nice drive and we get no points. And, you know, that's happening far too often this year. It's really disappointing. But we still have the lead up 14-3 to with 11.06 left to play in the game. Citadel takes over and uh, Derek Butler starts out with a nice sack for a three-yard loss. Right. Uh, you know, nice call. We had a little X stunt and, and uh, Derek popped through there and I think tackled the quarterback on the option. Nice play. And this one really kept their drive going on a fourth and one. Murphy run for nine yards on a first down deep in their own territory they went for that one. Well, and the bad thing is they third and 15 and they make 14 yards and to enable them to go for it on fourth and one. And, you know, they didn't throw the ball a whole lot. But when they did, they were fairly effective throwing, especially on third down. After the fourth down pickup, uh, Aaron Whitaker, a nice pass breakup coming back to the ball on that one. Right, and, uh, you know, they, we weren't getting a lot of pressure. He was sprinting out, and, you know, we probably need to widen our guy out a little bit to try to get some, some better pressure. And, uh, the uh, you know, to their credit, they were just kind of getting out there, and he had all day to throw, and we were doing a pretty good job covering time and uh, even fumbles going Citadel's way later in the drive. Uh, Mahoney fumbles, but they recover and end up getting a first down on the fumble. Right, and uh, you know, that's just uh, part of football. It's uh, having people around the ball, and to their credit, they were able to get on it. But the, the defense doesn't break. Derek Butler comes up with a big five-yard loss on the sack, and uh, that forces them to, to kick a 37-yard field goal, and we're still up eight with 3.07 left to play. Right, and still feel like that uh, you know, we we get, I really felt like we had the game in control if we could just get get the ball back, and I, I really thought we could run the clock out. Problem is, they they attempt the onside kick and they recover on our 47 yard line. Now things get a little dicey. Well, it wasn't. It was a great kick on their part. I mean, the guy got a, a nice bounce, and we don't play it exactly like we need to. We got our outside guys rushing into the ball, and ball got tipped out on the boundary, and. Their guy caught it, and thank goodness he went down. I don't, you know, he could have ran down the sideline with a problem. And the defense, uh, given all they got left the rest of the game uh, on a third and two, a big hit at the line for for a one-yard loss. Right, and uh, again, once they got down in our territory, when we got our backs to the goal line, we played a little better. Then on a, a fourth and three, drum and a pole for a big first down. Right, and, uh, you know, they were going to want it to hold on to the football and, and, and make the plays and, and give themselves a chance to at least tie the game. Two biggest plays of the game on third and nine with 15 seconds left. David Young in the coverage, and they, they kind of have to throw it out of the end zone. Right, right and, uh, you know, they had to throw it out the back of the end zone, and which really only gave them one, one play left to try to get it into the end zone. And finally on fourth and nine with 10 seconds left, it's an incomplete pass out of bounds. Defense is exhausted. We escape with a 14-6 to 6 win. Right, and I guess any time you win in the league, you ought to be happy, but uh, I was a little dis I was not a little, I was a lot disappointed in the way we played, and I was disappointed in the way the, that uh, we had them prepared. I don't think I did a very good job getting them prepared for this game, and I'll take as much credit as I give the players. It's a, a team effort, and it's not us and them, it's all of us together, and when we don't do well, it's as much my responsibility as it is there. But we come out with the win, we remain undefeated, and when we come back, we'll talk about next week's game on the road at East Tennessee State. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001, Coach. It's, uh, it's back on the road up, a familiar road up 77, this time to, uh, to East Tennessee State for a uh, uh, a shot against them uh, and a team that played the Citadel pretty well and they actually beat the Citadel on a last second field goal. Right, and a team that's getting better each game as, as they go along and uh, you know we've always had a, always been tough to play up there in the in the airplane hangar, the dome, so uh, you know what we got to do is come back and refocus and hopefully get some guys healthy and and go up there and see if we can't uh, be a little better prepared and play a little better football game. And we're back on the AstroTurf next week. Uh, last week against App, we got kind of banged up on the AstroTurf, especially JR. Uh, how do you feel about him possibly coming back and well, playing next well, week? Well, I think we'll evaluate him this week and see. I think he's got a chance, but uh, we won't know probably until the middle of the week. Uh, and uh, talk about a another road trip and another big test with Furman the week after the East Tennessee game. I'm sure you want to play well next week. Also. Yeah, I'm worried about East Tennessee State. The way we played today, that better be the only game we're focusing on or, or uh, we'll be in real trouble. <laughs> All right, Coach, next week back on the road at East Tennessee State in Johnson City. We'll see you right here on Georgia Southern Football 2001. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford and State Forum, the dealership that does business the right way.
Georgia Southern football with Coach Paul Johnson.